Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> you know, sometimes the public is wrong. You remember when the public thought that Oscar De La Hoya was going to beat Floyd Mayweather? Do you remember before the Super 6 Super Middleweight Championship Series on Showtime how little the public thought of then unbeaten Andre Ward? You remember Andre Ward was actually an underdog against Mikael Kessler. People thought that Kessler was the vastly superior fighter. From time to time we get it wrong. I famously picked here online Oscar De La Hoya over Manny Pacquiao in a fight that was lopsided on my scorecard in Pacquiao's favor. Right? Well let me say this. In boxing you definitely get what in the investment world are called bubbles. Right? Sometimes when you're investing stock a company is going to be hopelessly overpriced. Right now, for example, Apple has a market cap of more than the value of the entire Russian stock market. Right? Ludicrous. Well, I'll say this. There's some guys right now with bubbles in boxing, in my opinion. This is just one man's opinion. I understand the public disagrees with me. But I'm going to break with the crowd right here. <clears throat> against bigger names names you might know better right Adrian Broner and Manny Pacquiao I would take Terence Crawford just like I took him over Yorkie Scamboa and of course Crawford delivered in that fight and that video is still up let me say this, if you look at his recent fight against Ray Beltran, you're going to realize that he moves too well for Broner, right? A Ray's shoulder wouldn't work defensively against Crawford because Crawford's ambidextrous, right? Broner's not going to be able to raise this shoulder. Then as Crawford changes from righty to lefty, raise the other shoulder, right? Let me say this too. He's way too much like Juan Manuel Marquez for Manny Pacquiao. You'll notice in this Beltran tape that he starts out on his back foot throwing a jab, very much like Juan Manuel Marquez, right? He has his right close to his face. He's really defensively shelled up. He's setting traps for Beltran. So as Beltran jumps inside, Crawford is counterpunching, just like Juan Manuel Marquez did successfully against Manny Pacquiao. Right? But understand, I believe a fight between Terence Crawford and Manny Pacquiao might be even more lopsided because Crawford, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, psychologically is really more of a front foot fighter. Right? He'd be able to come forward on Manny Pacquiao, two-handed attack, right? giving Pacquiao nowhere to go. Right? He'd come forward on Pacquiao just like he came forward in this fight against Beltran in the 12th round. Pacquiao's main style of defense, head movement, where he's bobbing and weaving, wouldn't be enough against Terence Crawford. Right? You're dealing with a really advanced fighter here. Let's coin a new phrase. You know, I've used phrases like mid-range hooker to discuss a guy who operates at mid-range and stuff like that. Well now, because of Crawford and Tyson Fury, let's call a guy who has both a left jab out of an orthodox stance 
and a real authentic right jab out of a southpaw stance, a dual jabber. Right? Understand with Crawford, he doesn't even have to get mid-range to hit you. He's long range, but because he's jabbing you and he's not throwing power shots, he doesn't leave himself too open defensively. So you're dealing with a nightmare. A guy who comes out and he's active, he's pumping a jab. Then when you figure out how to block that jab, he switches angles and he's pumping the other hand as a jab. So Crawford is winning the rounds from the outside. When you leap in, Crawford counters you. As you watch Juan Manuel Marquez against Manny Pacquiao, it's interesting. Especially the third fight. Because as Manny Pacquiao is coming forward, and as Juan Manuel Marquez is going backward, Marquez somehow is able to stay off the ropes. Right? Even though he's backing up, Pacquiao never seems to pin him against the ropes. Because he knows how to back up in a circle. He knows how to somehow back up but keep himself in the middle of the ring. That takes incredible footwork and calmness. Especially when you're dealing with an explosive puncher like a Manny Pacquiao. Well, that's exactly the kind of footwork and calmness that Terrence Crawford has. But make no mistake. I believe Crawford's not even there to outbox you. Because I've noticed when Crawford gets hit with shots, sometimes he loses his temper and he steps on his front foot. Crawford, to me, is a guy who likes to fight. Look at him in the 11th and 12th rounds of this Beltran fight. Right? He literally starts coming forward on Ray Beltran. Right? Beltran looks beaten up. Crawford knows in the middle of the 12th round, because he dominates the first two minutes of that 12th round, that he's won the fight. Understand Beltran knows it too. Beltran does things to try to get inside. He can't get inside on Crawford, because Crawford's always drifting to the middle of the ring. But then when Beltran stops coming forward, Crawford comes forward. The fight's not all back foot. Crawford's back foot and front foot. The fight's not all right-handed. Crawford's right-handed and left-handed. Right? Poor Ray Beltran doesn't look like he has a clue on what to do. The problem, too, is if you don't step on the gas against Terrence Crawford, you're going to lose a wide decision because Crawford doesn't have to get close to you to be effective. He can hit you with the dual jabs from distance and easily win rounds. What I want you to do too is take a look at the 11th round. Take a look at Crawford's hands. It's interesting. Now Crawford's a very good defensive fighter but yet I wouldn't call him overly cautious because he drops his hands in the 11th round. Right? You're gonna see Crawford really with dropped hands throwing punches Right? When it's not jabs, Crawford likes to get close and then touch your body. Right? I view Crawford like I view Tyson Fury and Andre Ward. I view Crawford as a chameleon. In other words, he speaks several boxing languages. For a guy to beat Crawford, there is a hole I see in Crawford's game. There are times in this fight where Crawford is backing away from the pocket and Beltran's able to take an extra step and actually hit him actually catch him Crawford at times lowers his guard as he backs away but understand for a fighter to exploit that the fighter's gonna have to know how to handle himself in the pocket in other words you have to be close enough to Crawford so that when Crawford backs away you step forward with him. I would say that's going to be too hard for most fighters. 
put me among those who believes right now I'm talking about today December the 5th 2014 right now that if Crawford were to fight Broner and Broner has fought at much heavier weights than Crawford understand Crawford right is a guy who is moving up in weight I take Crawford over Broner right Crawford's a top ranked fighter Manny Pacquiao was a top ranked fighter people here know I view Pacquiao as a tad bit overrated right I took Pacquiao over Algeri but I take Crawford over Pacquiao now oddly the kind of fighter I think who might give Crawford problems is a fighter like Timothy Bradley right understand Bradley is a guy who can smother you who knows how to get close who can box you and then as you back up move with you right Crawford Bradley that's an entertaining fight the problem of course and it is a big problem is that Crawford's bound 140 now and Bradley would be up at 147 right so Bob Arum saying that Crawford could be a potential opponent for Manny Pacquiao there are rumors and they're getting louder and louder that Pacquiao is about to announce that he's gonna fight Floyd Mayweather right if that fight takes place and if Pacquiao loses that fight I believe Pacquiao's people, I believe his promoter Bob Arum will understand that Crawford would be too dangerous of a comeback opponent. Quite frankly, Crawford is one of the best pound for pound in the sport right now. He's already dismantled Yorkeese Gamboa. He's already dismantled Ricky Burns. He's already dismantled Ray Beltran. Right? I would take Crawford against Danny Garcia. And Garcia's big for 140. Right? Keep an eye on Terrence Crawford. I encourage everyone to take a look at his fight against Ray Beltran, especially the last three rounds of the fight. Right? Understand, Crawford puts in work to set up the last three rounds of the fight. You remember Ray Beltran had Ricky Burns, a very slick customer right during their 135 title fight up on the ropes dealing with volume that's what Beltran does right take a look at how ineffective Beltran is in trying to get Terence Crawford up on the ropes right Crawford is a master at spacing he's dominant from far away He's slick defensively. He's smooth as you jump inside. That's a rough combination. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Trust me. I know there are times where the public thinks I'm crazy. I know the Adrian Broner crowd right now is saying, you got to be kidding. Dwyer's a whack job, etc. Right? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Just understand that Vegas is built on bubbles right just like the Denver Broncos were the favorites in last year's Super Bowl and Seattle was the better team and dominated that Super Bowl I'm just here to tell you there are people in boxing it's just the nature of gambling there are people in boxing who right now the public overvalues right guys like Adrian Broner Manny Pacquiao are better known than Terrence Crawford. Better known. That doesn't mean they're better. Take a look at Crawford. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.